We're continuing the New Creators Edition series with Chris Somney on this week's show, and we're going to be taking a look at a couple of pages of Chris's work on Thor The Mighty Avenger. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and with Chris Somney this week, we're going to show you some of the cool work going on in the pages of some of the best comics. So this book was done with writer Roger Langridge, and here, where he was giving you a full script as opposed to the breakdowns that we've talked about last time with yourself and Mark Wade on Daredevil and Black Widow, and also, we're looking at a page without any action. Do those two things together alter your approach? I mean, ideally all I'm doing is putting myself in the character's shoes. I mean, I'm acting through the the characters on the page, and that's all I was doing on this one was, you know, I'd read the dialogue and figure out how she would move and then just figure out where the camera needed to be and get on to the next page. The staging is pretty straightforward because, I mean, we're in her office, you know, a low angle, well, relatively low, like a sitcom angle on her. Just nothing exciting because nothing exciting happens in her office. This is just an everyday sort of thing. And then for the page turn, then it's all the way down on the ground. We're looking up at Thor like a god. That's when it starts getting exciting. But I wonder if that's harder to deal with, with a less visually explosive page? This is so easy. I mean, okay. this is, yeah, I mean, this would be one of those two page days. Like, oh, <laughs> she just has to be on her phone? All right, so I'll do that one and another page of people talking, and that'll be the, <laughs> the day that I get two pages done. No, this was, this is just Jane on the phone, you know, a little bit of acting and uh, I mean the background was either stat or trace from mm -hmm. the pencils I just put it on a light box for those or first two panels I think I'd already drawn the background before either in that issue or in prep for the series I'd drawn like the layout of it and already figured all of where everything needed to be just toss it in and and you're good to go yeah so that was it's easy stuff this is <laughs> you know the the, uh, the people talking and the that's all that's that's easy I don't think I've really made an easy page for myself in Black Widow. <laughs> I keep pushing myself trying to do something different. Well, your work can be very expressive, such as Jane here. You can kind of read all of the stuff on her face quite easily. Are you acting that out or does it just kind of come naturally? Yeah, I mean, that's just, uh, it just comes natural. But I'm just trying to get them to act on a page. I mean, I act out all the motions, but I do that with, with a fight scene too. I act it out in my office. I do all the beats to make sure that it can physically work in a fight scene. And I do the same thing when somebody is talking on a on the phone for six panels um <laughs> you know i can feel my face and figure out you know what i need to cartoon and um, jane's a little more animated than i would be you know, her hands are moving and she's gesticulating and you know she's excited she's you know she has vibrance that i i don't <laughs> <laughs> so she's just a you know a little more animated a little cartoonier she's like um natalie portman in oh shoot I can't remember the name of the movie. Thor? No, not Thor. <laughs> <laughs> I know she ended up playing Jane, which is odd. Um, uh, Natalie Portman in Garden State. She's just... That sounds so weird to like say that out loud. She's animated. She's almost a child. She's is in tune with her emotions. And I think in a comic, everybody has to be. You have to crank up emotions to 11 to get it to read. It's like the difference, isn't it, between like say film acting or like theater acting right where yes, we, we yes. to be bigger yeah comics is definitely theater it's, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio between movies and comics you, you really have to turn it up i mean you you can't just take uh stills from a movie and expect them to work in a comic because everything is cranked up you know motion is is bigger than the and acting is bigger you've gone for this six panel grid here on this page does Roger give you that in the breakdown in the script, or is that something you're building? Oh no, that was up. That was up to me. Roger is a, is a cartoonist before he was a writer, so all of the the uh, composition decisions he left that to me. We talked about that before I started on it. He knew that that's what I wanted for the most part. Any of my scripts, they don't dictate panel compositions. They don't tell me angles. And if they do, I usually ignore them. <laughs> so where do you see the divide between what a writer needs to do and what an artist needs to do? Writing the script, what they say, you know, what's happening in the panel, that's the writer's job. But my job was figuring out where the camera is, what the panel's going to be bigger, what's the smallest, what am I going to have to do to make an emotional impact on the reader? And that's not necessarily the script writer's job. Um, yep. I'm trying to get as much... <laughs> not credit but this is you know it's uh part of my job it's one of the requirements and mm -hmm. you know it's just something that i take pride in doing 
Well, on this final two panels, we can see you adapting that structure you built with the six panel grid. I guess you're playing with it to build that open space and then drop smaller to lead up to that big splash with four on the page turn. Well, and on panel five, I wanted her to travel across her office. You kind of tra travel with her. So we're going from panel left to panel right. And as we follow that along, and then there's the, the stripes on the wall, you're getting the cast light through the window of her door. That's just to help you travel along. You're slowly moving along that page and then you get one more short beat before you turn the page and then there's a big emotional impact on the next panel, on the next yeah. page, and then we have a splash page. So it's more musical than a lot of my stuff. So we go bump, 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 boom, and then with the big one. <laughs> that seems so silly, but but uh, probably the most musical of the pages. It's just sort of staccato before we get to the, the big orchestral bong on the next page. I'm definitely going to read all comics now with a musical approach to Pete's. It's quite a clever way of seeing the actual moments of the page broken down in the pacing. So that's it for the second episode of Chris Somney's Creators Edition. Next week we're back with a third part looking at a page from his work on Daredevil with Mark Wade and Javier Rodriguez. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying Strip Panel Naked and would like to help support while getting access to a whole host of extra content, including new articles, page annotations and reading lists, as well as the monthly comic book club, please check out our Patreon. We would absolutely love your support. You can also find me on Twitter at HassanOE, where I post a bunch of extra page breakdowns every week. And finally, hit subscribe to keep up to date with all the Strip Panel Naked episodes. And as always, we'll see you next time.